Hello, everyone. We are so excited to be here. Thank you for jumping on to the second link. We really appreciate you. So my name is Quinn Enright, and I am the content creator and community management specialist for Schwarzkopf Can. And I am here today with the one and only Danilo Bozek. And today is all about air touch. So we have this beautiful class that we have connected two icons, I would say, Danilo Bozek and Blonde Me. And we are going <laughs> And we are going to be talking about air touch. We're going to be walking you through. Now, before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. So there is a live chat. This is a YouTube live today. We really want you to participate. And we are so excited for this exclusive event. So please, if you have any questions about Blonde Me, if you have any questions about air touch, this is the time to ask them with the master himself. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, we also have Michelle Oliver. She is our content crea or creative content manager for Schwarzkopf Professional in Canada, and she is manning the chat as well. So she's kind of behind the scenes to help answer any questions. Now, Danilo is the master of AirTouch, and he is here today to talk really about the ins and outs of it, and he's going to explain everything to you. If you do have any other questions, make sure you put them in the chat, and I'm going to be asking them live. So we're going to be kind of piggybacking together, and we're going to be talking about it together. So but without further ado, this is our Schwarzkopf ambassador and amazing AirTouch Pro, Danilo Bozic. First of all, thank you very much, Quinn. It was really nice of you. Uh, I want to say thank you for all of you joining this live. Uh, I know you might have something else to do, but I appreciate being with us here and spend some time with us. And there's a lot of nice words towards me because, you know, all Canadians are nice, but let's get this straight. All of those titles, being ambassador and an air touch master or something, that's all nice, but in the, in the end of the day, I am a hairstylist. I'm doing a color, I'm doing hair, I'm nothing different and better than you guys. Maybe I put myself and my interest and my work ethic a little bit toward to accomplish something bigger, something different, work on my social medias, work on my craft, try to get to the perfection. And I did it in sort of the way, but I'm just doing the hair. So there is no magic while you're doing the hair. You have to know the skills. You have to understand the things, how it works. And also you have to get a good product. So when I say a good product, the product that you understand and that you can trust those products, that's for me, Schwarzkopf. Schwarzkopf is really, really big part of my growth and big part of my craft. Also the Blonde Me line, just the name Blonde Me, it's gonna tell you a lot about that, so you're gonna do blondes. So that's gonna be a little bit of intro, but we all came here to see a little bit of the air touch and know a little bit more about the air touch and understand a little bit about that. So that is gonna, be a thing that I'm gonna run you through. There is few of you that might know me, and if you know me, you know that I don't like rules, because that means if you tell me something, don't do it, guess what, I'm gonna do it. So I'm doing that not because I'm stubborn, but I wanna see, understand what's going on if that is not recommended to do it. So there are a the lot of things by Schwarzkopf, they are not recommended to do it, but you have to. So what is the thing with me? I love to know the rules as a professional that I can break them as an artist. But air touch as a technique has the rules. You don't have to follow them, but that's gonna get you in the game where it's gonna be hard, when it's not gonna be easy and you're not gonna get desired look. When I say desired look, air touch is no magic. A lot of people thinking like, oh, using air touch is gonna be a blonder. No, guys. The product is going to give you a color. Technique is going to give you a look. So what is the thing with the air touch? It's going to give you a nice, seamless, blended, super soft look. That is the technique that you can achieve that look with that technique only. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Should I start with the rules first, or do you want me to show you the difference and what is the thing about the air touch? Let's go with the rules. First rule about the air touch is sectioning. 
There is a few sectionings for air touch technique and the one that I'm gonna do today is rhombus because I'm gonna create the rhombus on the top of the head of my client and I'm gonna show you how to create that section. I'm gonna go step, step by step and I'm gonna explain how and why to do that. After that, there is a few more rules that we're gonna talk about later, but let's start with the sectioning. Are you ready? Probably you say yes or thumbs up or whatever, I cannot see that. But also, you have a live chat, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask them. If you don't ask them during this live and try to DM me tomorrow, guess what? I'm not gonna respond because now you're here. Please ask the questions and I'm gonna try to give you an answer on all of them. So, this is my beautiful model. Should I say the name on Serbian, Jovana? Can you imagine you're gonna say that on English, Jovana? <laughs> That's not her name. But anyways, so every air touch starts with a clean and straight hair. Did you guys hear about the Blonde Me Detox Shampoo? That is the product that all of my clients starting with. Why? I need a clean canvas. We all have like a lot of uh, leftovers of the product, of the hard minerals in the water. That is the, that is the shampoo that is gonna remove everything from your hair and create a clean canvas. Just let me get you that a little bit more to be clear. Your clients, all of the clients, they don't know how to wash the hair and they don't know how to rinse the product. Most of them come in, in with a clean hair, but actually that hair contained the leftovers of the conditioner. What the conditioner does, conditioner is gonna neutralize and stop working your lightener. So if she didn't rinse that properly, your lightener has to fight through that. So it's gonna slow down or neutralize your lightener. You're not gonna get a full uh, power of the product. So I like to use Blonde Me Detox Shampoo before, remove all the products from the hair and then get a clean canvas. Are we good? Oh, showing a detox shampoo, that's cool. <coughs> Am I back? Cool, so after I got a detox shampoo, I'm gonna hair make it straight, why straight? If your hair is not straight, if it's tangly, if it's curly, it's not gonna be easy to separate because it's gonna get tangled over the longer pieces. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit when I show you how to do air touch, but let's go back on sectioning. So sectioning every air touch goes with a sectioning on the middle. So what that means, that means that you're gonna split the hair on a left and a right side, two equal parts. Left and right side supposed to be equal and even. So I'm gonna do that on the back. So I'm doing a sectioning real quick here right now. I'm gonna turn around the, my model that you can see that, let me just do that before, and also we have here my friend Morgan, he's gonna be the camera guy, he's gonna try to show you a little bit more what I'm doing here up close. So also, if there is any question that you say like, hey Danilo, can you repeat that, can you show that again? We are more than happy to do that for you guys. Okay, so here we have equal left and right side, can you see that? After that, I'm gonna split left and right side on a two equal parts. So what that means, I'm gonna go top of the head, behind the ear, and I'm gonna split this on a two equal parts. Okay, I need more clips, give me one second. Same thing I'm gonna do on the other side. Here. Morgan, do you want me to flip the chair or you're gonna yeah, walk around? Turn around to the... To the here? Yeah. There you go. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Split on the left and the right side. As you can see, this is also something that I did yesterday. So my sectioning, it's, sectioning is always the same behind the ear and you can see the dark part that I didn't do that I'm gonna do in the front of you. So I'm gonna put this back. Then, when we have four equal parts, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna split left side on the two equal parts. So this, it's gonna be on a half. Going in here, split on the two equal parts. Cannot be 
this bigger or the lower side bigger. It has to be on the middle. That all depends on the head shape and the head size, where it's going to be, but it has to be balanced on a four on an equal section. Same thing I'm going to do on the other side. See half from here to here, you're looking for a half for the middle, which is here, straight line. Usually it's going to take you on a recessional line here, so on a, that's it. When you have this done, now it's really easy. Look what's going to happen. I'm going to use those points here as my guide. So I'm going to take this and put one triangle there. And you see what's going on? This is something that I didn't do. This is undone. This is something that is done. You can see the color. Even I didn't try to do this. It's take me immediately on a part that I didn't do. I'm going to create the other side the same from this point to the point on the side. And I will get one little triangle. What is the triangle? Triangle here. And this is already done. And this is undone. So when I have this little triangle here on the back, I'm going to just create the same thing on the top. And that's going to be my sectioning. And you're going to see how I'm getting the rhombus. This goes here. And the rhombus on the other side is going to show in here. Just a little bit more precise. I'm a precise person. I like to go into a details like really precise. And here is my rhombus. As you can see, this is the shape of the rhombus that I got here. And this is something that is done. This is something that she came in with. So dark pieces, you can see here highlights, some of the low lights, unfortunately. And I'm going to create nice and seamless blend on this piece in the front of you. Are you ready for this, guys? Right now, before I start talking about my product, do you have any questions about the sectioning or this is clear this looks amazing Milo everyone's loving it online right now okay perfect so let me run you real quick one more time through sectioning with the words okay so you're gonna split your client on the left and the right side then you're gonna do the sides behind the ear top of the head you're gonna get four equal sections the left and right side you're gonna split into two equal parts and then you're going to get a guide on the back that is going to tell you where you're going to run the one triangle to create a half of the rhombus, and you're going to re repeat the same thing on the top. That's it. It's really easy, OK? So when we know how to do sectioning, sections for air touch cannot be thicker than half of the inch. Could be thinner, but cannot be thicker. If you have thick sections, that section has to travel in a foil. And then you're going to get negative dark space. And then you have to do a root smudge and root tap. Let me show you in here. I didn't do any of root, ta root tap, root smudge. Just one all over toner. And you can see how this is nice and blended. Because the sections are thin. OK. Let's go into the air touch. Are you ready for that? So. Let me tell you one more thing. Morgan, you're here. So you're I'm going to do the section here. All the sections should be parallel with the rhombus. What is the difference? The difference it is, is this. This is really important, guys. Yeah, can you go on me? No, yeah. When you place the foil horizontal, it's going to give you more coverage, but it's going to grow with the line of demarcation. If you place your foil fully vertical, it's going to give you less coverage, but it's going to grow out more soft and blended. So why do we create the rhombus? We're creating the rhombus because we're getting diagonal sectioning. Diagonal foil is going to give you enough amount of the covering, but also it's going to uh, grow soft and melted. And it's not going to leave you line of demarcation because it has to travel from diagonal how it lays down naturally. Does that make sense? Perfect. OK. Let me show you one thing that is really, really useful. We all know how to use teasing comb for a teasing balayage, right? That is a tool. Blow dryer is also a tool. Doesn't do any magic. We don't using any heat. We're using a blow dryer as a tool to create the look, to use for a technique. What that means? 
Morgan, can I have you here for a second? OK, let's go into this. So you're going to take one section and do teasing balayage. If you hold your fingers on a strand on a half, you're going to tease simply all the short pieces that are in between your fingers and a scalp. You're pushing them close to the scalp. The more here you're pushing toward the scalp, she's less blonde and get more dimension. But here's the thing. When you do this, you cannot go all the way close to the scalp. OK? Then you have to take the tease out. Let's, be, let's get real. Clients don't like that. They don't like because it's hurting. And also, they're thinking that you're damaging your hair, their hair with a, that weird sound of the, you know. What is the air touch? It's pretty much the same thing. Look where I'm holding the hair. When I turn on the blow dryer, all of those short pieces I'm going to push in between the foil. So there is no difference here. You're going to push them close to the scalp or in between. The more I'm traveling down the strand, I'm releasing the short pieces, and she's less blonde and getting more dimension. Does that make sense? Is that easy? But when you're doing the air touch, if you're going to put this in a foil, what you can do, you can do those pieces in between for a color correction. You can go all the way close to the scalp, and you don't have to brush it out the tees, and you're not hurting your client. So pretty much, it's the same thing with the benefits. OK? That is the, what is the air touch? Let's go into an actual air touch application. So I'm going to go down, put her chin. Just a question, too. When people are first learning the air touch, what do you think is the most important key when you're first going into it? Would you say like blow drying or like where you hold your blow dryer? It, it's, it's a lot. It's a, those five things that I explained that hair has to be clean and straight is the one thing that is going to make it. It's going to make your air touch easier. Then the uh, thickness of the section and something that I'm going to show right now how to place the blow dryer and understand how you're going to do that really fast and really easy, OK? So she have like really narrow hairline on the back. So that is something that you can do if you want first foil as a neckline coverage. That's totally up to you how you're going to do that, OK? I'm not going to do that on her. So I'm going to start with this little corner. And I'm starting, as you can see, parallel with my side of the rhombus. So they go parallel. I'm going to take this little tiny section. And now, Morgan, I'm going to need you on the, like, yeah. some other side because sure. I'm going to need yeah. the tools. Look at this. I'm going to put a little bit of the tension on my strand. I'm going to place blow dryer and then turn it on. I'm not moving from the scalp. I'm going to show you later what's going on. I'm going to clean my section. You see how this is clean? I can go close to the scalp. I'm going to take my board, put it close to the scalp, and I'm going to paint here. What I'm doing here, I'm using Blonde Me 9 Plus with 2% or 7 volume. And I'm going to apply my product on the strand. How close you're going to go to the scalp, it all depends on you and your skills, but the thing that you shouldn't do, you shouldn't get the bleeders. When you're using Blonde Me Lightener, Blonde Me Lightener is strong lightener and could swell a little bit. That all depends on the temperature, depends on the foils, depends on the mixing ratio. So I always like to leave a little bit of the spot if my lightener is going to get swelled and want to go out, that I'm going to leave the room for not go over to the scalp. OK, I'm going to do one more here, and then I'm going to show you how you shouldn't do air touch. That is pretty much what you're doing most of the time, whoever tried air touch. And after that, I'm going to show you one super cool trick that I can bet that you all struggled with, and that is how you get your foils open with the blow dryer. That's so annoying. So I'm moving already blonde pieces because no need to make them blonder. Otherwise, they're going to get broken. Geneva, which product are you using right now, and what's your formulation? I just said I'm using the Blonde Me 9 Plus lightener with 2% of developer, that's 7 volume, in ratio 1 on 2. 1 to 2 ratio. Is there a reason that you use 
the re uh, ratio one on two instead of one on one and a half. Yeah. Yes, there is a reason for that because she have really fine hair. Her natural level, it's not so dark. So what I realize, if I'm adding a little bit more of developer, I'm diluting my product and it's not gonna be any more that aggressive and that's not gonna be nine levels of lift. It's gonna be a little bit less than that because let's be real, do I need nine levels of lift? I don't. So sometimes I'm gonna use even one on two and a half or one on three. Blonde Me Lightener has that magical bonding technology that works together with the shampoo, with the hair care, with everything, because all of those bonds get stronger and stronger the more you're using that. And also has that, I don't, I don't know the technical words for that, but that's that anti-metal technology inside that is gonna remove the, the, the leftovers of the hard minerals in the hair. Let me show you this. Most of you, what are you doing? Can I go on the main camera just for a second? Just for a second. Most of you, you're gonna, that's the habit, understand that, because we're using a blow dryer for blow drying. So what you, when you pick up your blow dryer, you're gonna turn it on because you need for a blow dryer. You have to change that mindset for the air touch because if you do this and then go here, you immediately pushing the hair from the middle of the strand and get tangled. That's the first thing that you're doing wrong. The second thing is you're gonna start from the mid shaft and you all are gonna try to do this. And th there is no point because you see how this is tangled and then you're gonna try to pull down with the hands. Even if you do that, look how it's tangled. So you shouldn't do that. Put a tension on the strand, place the blow dryer close to the scalp, turn it on, and then travel with your left hand or right hand, that depends on, like, on the strand. Get a clean blow dry out, and you see how this is clean, how I can go close to the scalp? Take the board and just go close to the scalp. That's it. As you can see what I'm doing here, I'm really picky about my color. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick out all the previously done highlights, and I'm gonna work only on a dark pieces. She have light ends, so I'm gonna stop here. On the next strand, I'm gonna show you how you're gonna be even faster with air touch. That's gonna be the lightener application. This is something that I have find out traveling and working all around the world where the hairstyle is making a mistake, not just with the air touch, with in overall saying I'm slow hairstylist. There are some people that are a little bit slower than the other, but that doesn't mean that you have to be slow. So you can change that in your advance. So look at this. I know that I need half of the shorter pieces of the texture out. So I'm gonna go and hold it immediately on the half of the strand, turn on the blow dryer. You see this, what happened right now? On next one, I'm gonna show you what to do for not get that open. So I'm gonna blow dry the pieces, clean the section. You see how it goes like really nice close to the scalp using the board. And look at this right now. You can see how I got enough product on my brush. So what I'm doing in that case, I have enough product. I'm gonna apply through the strand, isolate all the highlights previously done. And then you see, I still have a product on my brush. So in three moves, I have full application and saturation. Uh, actually, Morgan, mm -hmm. let me close this one and then we're gonna go on a color ball to show you what you shouldn't do with your lightener, which most of the people are doing that. Mo Can you get here? Yep. Most of the people are dipping like this. This is not enough product. How you should use your brush to keep it clean, you should scoop and get more product on your color brush. This is the way how you're saving the time on application. Let me show you that again, how you shouldn't do this. So you're gonna take the, this is actually how it looks, air touch to take you forever for doing it. So first of all, 
you're gonna turn on your blow dryer and you're gonna start doing this. See, this is like so much time. And then you're gonna try to push that down. This is an extra time. It, it's like just a lot of time. Don't do this. Do it this instead. See this? Three seconds, clean the strand, and you're good to go, okay? Danilo, there's a question here. Um, just about the board, do you always use a board with air touch is the question. You don't have to, but I do always using a board because it's gonna find to, I found that it's gonna, let me, let me just finish this and then I'm gonna explain about the boards. So, you're dipping and you have no product and then all of you are gonna do this and then you're gonna do this. That's a lot of time, you don't have to do that. Scoop on the top of your brush, apply close to the scalp. If you have to isolate those pieces, get them out. Apply it and that's it. Why the board? I like when the board give me the stability and give me a little bit more uh, Safe application, you don't have to, but if you don't using a board, most likely when you're saturating the hair, it's gonna pull down and you're not gonna go close to the scalp. Let me show you on the next one what you're gonna do with your foil for not getting open with the blow dryer. This is something that is gonna change your game behind the air touch if you face this problem. And that is that your board, that your foil is gonna get opened by the blow dryer. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna apply on a grow out first, remove all the previous highlights. In this case, I got just like two little strands of the low lights, I'm gonna fix them. And then look at this. Fold once, fold twice, fold the edge left and right side, and then take two of those fingers and then just do this with your foil. So do you see how I move the edge close to the scalp and make a little bit rounded? So in that case, your air from the blow dryer is gonna go over the edge, it's not gonna go inside. Let me show you that again. So you see, if you keep it like this, you see how this edge, it's easy to get the air in and it's gonna get open. So what you should do, take this and move your thumbs down and literally you're pushing the edge close to the scalp so the blow dryer is not gonna get it open. Danilo, we have a question. Yes. Um, it's about the speed of the blow dryer and the heat. Do those things matter? Those things do matter. And as I said on the beginning, no heat because we're not heating the foils, we're using a blow dryer as a tool, okay? And the max, the, the, the speed is max because you need a full power and full speed to push those pieces down. Can it be done with any blow dryer except the Dyson? Of course it can. I'm using Dyson because it's smaller and it's compact and has a wide nozzle, but that doesn't mean that it has to be used. And the other thing that I like about the Dyson Actually, this is not sponsored, this is not paid for, but I'm just sharing the tips. You have on and off button. Most of the blow dryers are first speed and second speed. So you have to wait to full power of the, your blow dryer and then you're gonna get those pieces pushed down. The next thing that is important about the air touch, consistency, and as you can see, let me just close this foil and I'm gonna show you what is the consistency that I'm looking for. close. See, I'm scooping every time my light, uh, lightener on a brush. Moving the pieces down, applying the lightener. Pretty much what I did on the first two foils, I'm doing all over, repeat, all the way. Don't 
those pieces in between foils. I'm going to move them out. So close the foil again. And then I'm going to fold the foil. So as you can see, this dropout and this dropout are same. This cannot be air touched. That this one is going to be this much. This one is going to be this long. That means that you don't have a consistency. So that means that you're going to push the less hair in one strand and more hair here on the another strand. Because this is what is creating the blend in between. And also, what you can do with air touch, you can do a color correction. So that means when you're done with the foils, if you want to correct this, you can take the darker color, apply in between, and then when you combine, you're gonna get a color correction. You cannot do this with any other technique except the, blow, uh, except the air touch. So am I answering the question or I still owe you some answer for the question, guys? No, I think that's perfect. Everyone's loving that answer. Can I, do, you have, do you guys have any more questions for me about anything? I have another question about um, being able to use air touch as a low light. Now, I know you talked about it earlier with color correction, but also it, can you use it for low lighting as well? Of course you can use it. Let's think about that. Let me finish this foil and try to explain you and get you closer about that. So you know, probably if you follow me, you've seen that I did that few time on my social medias, but also there is the one post that I did it on Maggie MH from platinum to create the balayage look. So pretty much what I did, I'll show you that on the next strand. You just right now should imagine that she used to be a platinum color with a uh, bleach touch up. So she's over, overall solid platinum and she have a grow out, let's say minimum two inches. Okay, can you imagine that real quick? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the strand, it's gonna be a little bit thicker than a half of inch because I don't go close to the scalp. So imagine this is all bleach from here down. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna push half of the hair, okay. This is, some, this is how I'm doing the, for the adding uh, darker pieces. This is blown, so I don't need it. I'm gonna clip that up. I'm gonna split this two more pieces, and I'm gonna separate that. So, I have a long piece that is previously bleached, so I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna use this to match her natural color. In her case, that would be six and seven one. So I'm applying six and seven one on a short piece. On a mid length that is a little bit shorter, I'm gonna use, let's say, eight and nine one to create a blend. So imagine this, six and seven one neutralize the short piece of the blonde, then this is a little bit more neutralized and a little bit lighter on the long pieces and this stays blonde. So she's getting from her natural dark, lighter, lighter and light ends and that is how I'm using that for adding the low lights. Does that make sense? That's perfect. We actually also have another question about the elevation of how you're holding the foil board. Okay, so that all depends. That is something that there is no rule for that. So let's say if I'm gonna use the air touch, that's all depends of your, of your height. So that means you can keep the board like this or also you can keep the board like this. There is no rule. The rule is that the board it's gonna keep your section clean and it's gonna give you a tension in between your body that you can, up so you see what I'm doing, the board, I'm holding the board with my body and I can lift the strand and this is literally connection and support in between. I will show you on the next one how that would look if you using, if you try to do that without board which is possible, but I'm gonna show you how that's gonna look and you're gonna see what is the struggle that you're gonna face with. That's perfect. Ina, that was a great question, love that. Okay, so you see right now, even if I'm painting, the board is not attached to my body, it's not 
pushing against my body, but I'm still holding with my hand and I can go close to the scalp and it's not moving. That is the thing that I like about the board because it's gonna give me a little bit more stability and security though. So let me show you the next one without board. Okay. Let's say we don't have board. We're gonna take the same section. We're gonna push the pieces in between. And now we don't have board. So you see this? You see how I cannot go close to the scalp? It's really hard, so you can do this but you see the struggle? It's time-wise, a lot of time. And now you have to paint like this. It's, with the board, it's easier. What you can do, if you have an assistant, but not board, what your assistant can do. Can you hold this for a second for me, Milica? So if you have an assistant, your assistant can do this for you, and then you can paint, but she, see? And then you can paint on the top of it. Okay, got it? Do you want me to move? So if you don't have board, you need an assistant to go close to the scalp. Because the option with the air touch, for me, if you ask me, you can do a root smudge, but the, the look that you're getting should be done without any root smudge. That's what I'm doing. I don't do rarely, 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 I'm gonna do any root smudge on my clients. So does it take a little bit more for application? Yes, it does. That's the fact. But where you're saving time, you're saving time because you don't have to brush out the teeth. You don't have to do a root smudge. My, you'll see. Can we, can we pull out the video how I'm doing the toner, how I did yesterday the toner, to see how much time do I need for a toner? Like literally five minutes. So I'm gonna just slightly shampoo it to remove the residue of the, sh of the lightener from, the, from my strand, from my hair, apply the conditioner, rinse the conditioner, and then I'm gonna, you see that? Yep, so you see that? It's really quick and easy. for her tone. I did a mixing of blonde me sand and ice. And I know that could be a little bit confusing because there are no numbers or the letters are there. But I'm gonna tell you what those colors means to understand why I've used them. If you're using more vibrance, Ice, it's gonna be 9.5-1, which is gonna be ash, half blue, half violet. Sand would be your beige, which is gonna be 9.54, which is gold and violet. So it's really easy to formulate in that way when you know the numbers, actually, the colors behind your toner, because every lightener is gonna lift yellow. So what I've used, I've used uh, sand, which is gold and violet to neutralize the yellow, and I've used the ice to apply a little bit of blue and violet to make it more ashy, neutral, beige color, which I'm gonna show you late after that when I'm done with the foils, how her hair looks after. So we do have videos before. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you live her color after. And I'm gonna also show you the consistency and how I'm mixing my blonde meat toners because I think it's pretty amazing because you can use them in the bowl, but also as you can see on my application, you can use them in a bottle because the consistency of blonde meat toners is so good that you can play with it and use it in a many different ways. What are the blonde meat toners? Let me just like, a lot of people don't understand that. Blonde meat toners are 
toners with a little bit more deeper pigment and more pigmented. So whenever you need a little bit more coverage, whenever you need a little bit more deposit of the tone, you can go for a blonde meat toners because they're a little bit more just deeply toned. Does that make sense? Perfect, I love that. Now, I, we are getting some questions about the mixing ratio. So the mixing ratio is one to one, one part color to one part developer. Yes. And you can intermix all of the Blondie toners, which I think is pretty cool because you can really play around with the creativity of it. Yes. Also, one more question. They just wanted to double check that it's toning, Blondie toning ice and toning sand. And that is correct. Yes, equal parts, half sand, half ice. But let me tell you something, guys. That is my toner formula that I formulate for my particular client. This is something that it's changed everything behind the chair for me when I did two things. First things, when I realized that half of the formula is already in the hair. So what that means, that I'm formulating based on what I have in my chair. So what that means, half of the formula. Half of the formula is already here in my lightener. If I have dark, deep level, the level of my client, and I lift her to the level eight, I'm not gonna use the same formula as I have for a lift nine. So half of the formula is already there. So that means if she's lifting orangey, I'm not gonna use violet, I'm gonna use a little bit more of blue. If she's lifting red and I wanna cancel, I'm gonna go formulate more for a green base color because I want to neutralize that. So half of the formula is already in the care, so that I'm going to put that in my color bar. The second, the second thing that I'm going to put in my color bar, formulate for the problem, not for the solution. What that means? Your clients say, and most of them are going to say, oh, I want to be ash because they don't like yellow. They want to be ash. So you're going from the chair to the color bar, thinking that she wanna be ash, what is going on? So you're forgetting what is the level and what is the tone that you deal with to formulate that. When you read that, half of the formula is already there, so you understand that if she's yellow and you wanna make her ash, you need violet to cancel yellow and you need blue to deposit to make it ash. And also formulate for the problem, not for the solution. So if you, she said, I want to be ash, you're not grabbing just ash because if she's yellow and you're grabbing ash, which is blue, she's going to get what? I know, green. So that is the thing that you have to think, and that is normal. That's in a human psychology that you from your client walk into the color bar, you're thinking how to make her happy. So you're forgetting the things that you have to know to get her happy. Does that make sense? Is that easy? So my formula for this particular client is half sand, half ice, because I lit her really, really pale yellow, so I needed sand, which is golden violet, to neutralize that yellow and apply the ash ice on that, which is blue and violet, and she got really nice blonde neutral color. Uh, question in chat with, from Katie and she was actually just wondering about if it's possible when you're doing the air touch technique if you can actually paint color in between if you wanted a darker end result so in between all of your lifted foils if you wanted a low lighted look could you paint a base color in between yes that's what I'm that I, that's what I was talking about so all of those pieces in here as you can see you can low light them so let's say if she she got like pretty much blonde color previews. So if I wanna cancel this and make it darker, I would use literally uh, eight zero two parts and one part of seven one to cover this with a base color eight zero, which she's naturally seven, natural level seven, and I'm gonna use seven one to cancel this, and she would get her color even in between. Why I didn't do that? Because this color is decent and it's not a whole lot, so that is gonna make my client a little bit overall lighter because the first thing that she said when she walked in, oh, I wanna be blonde. Because they, they're all saying that. Perfect, and then also, could you use possibly a clay lightener on the ends if they had some old pre-existing blonde that you wanted to just brighten up? I'm gonna talk a little bit about that as well. The product that you're using, 
it all depends on the current texture level and the hair situation previously done. Yes, you can. I will use, it's not recommended by the manufacturer, aka Schwarzkopf, to use clay lightener in a foil because it's made to be used on an open air painting because it's a thick consistency and it's meant to be used with 30 and 40 volume on open air and how it works, it works like that. When it dries out, it's gonna stop working. It's gonna give you what? Say it's up to seven levels of lift, but they have to say that it's up to seven levels of lift. That doesn't mean that it's gonna give you nine levels of lift. Same the blonde me nine plus, it's up to nine levels. Don't get for granted like, oh, nine levels of lift, she's gonna, no. Depends on the hair structure, depends on the hair texture, density, mixing ratio, uh, temperature in the salon. There's a lot of factors around that is gonna affect how much lift you're gonna get. So what I realize, if the clay lightener with 30 and 40 volume, up to 45 minutes is gonna give you three to four levels of lift on open air, because when it dries out, it's gonna stop working. I said, if I would, and you mix in one on one and a half, so it should be thick. I said, if I need two levels of lift, how I'm gonna get that? There is no lightener that is gonna give you two levels of lift. So I said, let me try it. To use clay, add more developer. So like using one on three. So that means I'm diluting my product. So it's not that strong anymore. I'm using lower developer. So it works really, really slow. And if I close that in a foil, it's not gonna dry out. So it's gonna give me those two to three levels or one level of lift. Depends how I'm gonna mix it through one hour. So yes, you can use clay lightener on the pieces of the hair that are not lifted enough. If you need one or two levels of lift, you can use that and it's gonna get you that. Sometimes when the hair is too compromised but you still need that cleanse a little bit, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply the conditioner first and then over that I'm gonna apply the lightener, so they're gonna neutralize each other. It's gonna give you a slight lift, but it's gonna keep the hair a little bit more moisturized and soft, so it's not gonna dry out and it's gonna reduce a little bit of breakaging. Does that make sense? Is this helpful? I know it's a lot of talk. I love talking. So that is pretty much it. So even if you, as you can see, I don't know how much we are in the live already? Forty-five. So with a lot of talking explanation, I did a full section in here, and as you can see, it's nice and clean. You can see here, I've finished this section, and I'm gonna show you how and why this is like, I'm gonna ruin the sections right now. I'm gonna take the other comb, and let's go and let me show you the power of air touch, how it looks when it's done, wherever you part, how it's gonna be nice, melted and blended. Okay, let's go in here. I'm gonna brush it out. Okay, can you put your chin down, please? So if you go here, so without any root smudge, can you see how this is nicely blended and melted? Even if you go on a part on a side, look at, here, the other side, same. Nice, melted and blended without any root smudge. The thing that I wanna say a little bit more, so you will go one section toward the rhombus here, then you're gonna move on on the another side, section number two. When you're done with the section number two, you're gonna keep moving on rhombus in the same direction. So pretty much rhombus is going connected in the same direction after section number two all the way up when you face the final side of the rhombus. What you're gonna do then, you will go on the side, same thing. You can cover the hairline with a few foils around the ear to get a full coverage if she's wearing the hair in a ponytail to get it blended. But then again, you're gonna start diagonal this section up and you're gonna finish in this little corner in here. Why you shouldn't go horizontal? Because remember, it's gonna grow with a hard line of demarcation, and it's gonna be blonder. You will do the same thing on the other side, 
and then you're going to stay with the two final sections on the top. You will go money piece, you don't have to do an air touch. You can do one, two or three really strong foils if you want to get really bright around the hairline. I don't like doing that. I like to do a little air touch because when she put her hair in a ponytail, it's not going to give her a harsh line of demarcation, especially after a month or month and a half. It's going to grow with a line, so I don't like that. And then you will keep going. Can I have your chin down, please? All the way up sections parallel with the side of the rhombus. So pretty much all sections are traveling on the side of the rhombus except the sides, but they're traveling on the rhombus with a corner. So that means that all the sections are placed diagonal. Does that make sense? I love that. That's an amazing. Okay, part. so how much time do we have for this live? Do we have time for answer you some can, questions? Oh, yeah. Or do you want me to show you the consistency of blonde meat toners right now real we, quick? We got time for what everyone wants, so you go ahead. Okay, perfect. So, blonde, just let me show you. You've seen on a video that I'm using the blonde meat toners uh, with a, in a bottle, but also, just that you know, you have to open the toner, otherwise you're not gonna squeeze them out. You see the consistency? It's kind of like clear gel. Clear gel. This is sand. I'm going to add a little bit of ice as well, which is same consistency. It's jelly. It's not the cream. So it's really runny. Then you're going to add 2% 7 volume developer. It's not going to shift your base. It's not going to shift your base unless you put a processing cap or you put a foil on the top and create a heat, then it might slightly shift the base, so be aware of it. And even look at this, when you mix this together, you're going to get like the creamy but runny consistency of this toner. So it's really easy to apply and it's really runny. The thing that you have to do with the deep toners, I will say, this is really useful. It's gonna start processing weird color. Purple, but it's not gonna get purple. But you see the consistency, it's really runny. It's really runny consistency, but the thing is, you've noticed you see how it's turning a little bit violet and purpley? But don't be scared of that. It's a deep toner, a little bit pigmented. It's not going to show purpley end result, as you can see on my model. But it's going to process like that because it's a little bit deeper. The thing is, when you apply in a uh, uh, strand of the hair, you should penetrate a little bit more into the hair because it is, it is toner, blonde me, but you have to penetrate a little bit for not staying on the surface, it's gonna give you a little bit better result. See, this is weird processing, but don't be scared, it's nothing gonna happen. That is just something that is gonna neutralize everything that is yellow, That's okay? Beautiful, I love that. And I love that the new formulation since the relaunch of blonde me has the bonding technology and all the toners. Yes, I've talked about that bonding technology in every blonde me product you have bonding technology. It's recommended to use from the shampoo through the lightener and the toner and the hair care after to be blonde me because all, all of that blonde me te uh, bonding technology goes from the product to the product and actually works in a hair to create the bond on the top of the bond that your hair is gonna be a little bit, little bit more stronger and a little bit more resistant. As you can see, she came in with previous highlights and lowlights, and I did a color on her. Is her hair super healthy? No, it wasn't healthy before she even get in. But I pulled the little bit of the lightener through the lowlights, and you can see that he, this hair, it's nice and soft and smooth and shiny because I've used all blonde me products from the beginning to the end and this bond is actually seems a little bit stronger than it was before. We have uh, two more questions too. 
First of all, when you go into your last sectioning, do you increase the developer strength ever, or do you usually keep it the same, or do you rinse? What's, what's the whole process usually take you, and how do you walk through it? Okay, my usual, usual foil application is everything in between hour and hour and a half, depends what I have to do. If I have a clean canvas and if I have to waste my time in picking up the low lights, that's gonna take me a little bit longer. If I have clean canvas, I can do it in an hour, an hour and 15. I will not increase the developer volume as I'm more going up. Why is that reason? Every processing time for developer is 45 minutes up to an hour. I love that my Lightner is gonna sit at least 45 minutes. At least 45, an hour. Let's say an hour. What's gonna happen? If you're increasing the developer, especially you have to think about that, 2% and 6%, that's seven volume and 20 volume, it's a huge difference. It's not seven and 10, it's like 20. That's a huge difference. So that means that something that is seven volume is gonna work for an hour, 20 volume is gonna be done in 30 to 35 minutes. Let's say 40 if it's not hot in a salon. That is a huge gap in the processing time. So what is happening? It's happening that you're getting the color at 30 minutes, same amount of the lift, same color as with seven volume in an hour. But what is different? Hair porosity. I don't like to increase that on the front because usually on the front and the top, hair is the mostly processed. If I'm gonna over process and create more porosity with my higher developer, because developer is only time. Amount of the lift you're gonna get through your product, through your bleach. Developer is only time. So when I'm creating more porosity, it's gonna happen something that's happened to me in the past and I was struggling what to do with that and if this happening to you, I'm gonna give you an answer why it's happening. You're gonna finish your highlights, you're gonna apply the toner and she's gonna be around the hairline or on the end she's gonna be more deeper purple, bluish. She's gonna be a little bit more deposit of the tone on those pieces. Why? Because it's overly processed. Porosity of the hair it's gonna determine are you gonna get your toner on a surface and change the color and give you a tone, or it's gonna be porous. It is gonna travel on porous hair inside and take more of that underlying pigment and you're gonna get that overtone around the hairline because you're bumping your developer and you're creating the porous overly processed hair. That's the reason why I don't do that. I love that, that's an amazing answer. And I think that that is something to really think about in those fine hairs in the front where it is, like you said, just a little bit more um, delicate of a structure and that's where you have yes. it there. And so remixing your lightener when you're using that seven volume to keep that strength up is also amazing, right? I am mixing 30 grams and that is gonna take me every 15 minutes to remix. So 30 grams every 15 minutes. If I have long hair, I'm gonna mix 40, 40 grams, but pretty much for every section, I'm gonna have enough 30 or 40 grams and every section is gonna take me to do 10 to 15 minutes. Don't be scared to remix your product every 15 or 20 minutes. Love that, that's amazing. All right, so for anybody that is just joining now or joining late, we're just gonna go ahead and pull up the before so we can really yes. get a good. Yes, we're gonna see before but also I'm gonna pull out here after so you can see the hair quality and you can see the color. There it is. Yep. Beautiful, I love that. So that before, you can really see the impact that we showed that before yes. to now. It's beautiful. And as you can see, she already came in blonde. But you can see here, I did this really nice, soft and melted and blended. Ends are even more blonder, but you see how this is healthy and shiny? I didn't over process her hair, and I've trimmed before, not after. I'm trimming my clients before, not after. So see the hair touch, whatever you part the hair, she should look same, blended, melted, no root much, no nothing. And the hair, see how I'm going nice and smooth and easy with my comb? What I like, I like to keep my client hair straight because when the hair is straight, you can see what it's done. When it's curly, everything looks better. So I love keeping straight because whatever you part, whatever you do, the hair looks really nice and healthy and shiny. Yeah, it looks unreal. It's Thank you. 
you know, being here in person and actually seeing this, I've seen it on Instagram so much, and I'm sure everyone can see, like, getting up close and personal with that camera, really getting to see what we've seen on Instagram so much has been such a pleasure. Thank you very much. Guys, do we have any more questions? I'm here. I would love to answer all of your questions that you have. Mm-hmm. Is it an easy process to convert it from highlights to air touch? So when you're going with standard highlights, is it easy to go to air touch or is it a little bit more complicated at first? It's just a little bit more time wise and you need a little bit more patience. So you need at least two to three inches of grow out that you can apply the lightener on that naturally grown out hair. And then you're gonna go just and pick up all of the light, uh, highlights, move them on the side and apply it on the dark color. That's what I did on her. It's, it's not hard, but it's just like a little bit more time con con consuming. But the same thing, if you want to add more highlights on previously highlighted hair, so you're going to do the roots a little bit more thicker or more dense, and then you're going to go to the previously that is not highlighted. You have to pick that and apply. Some people are going to use double foil. Some people, it's, it's just a lot of uh, uh, different ways to do that. With AirTouch, you've seen what I did on her. So I push the pieces down, I apply, on a, apply the lightener on a grow out, and then pick up all the low lights, move the highlights, and then I apply the lightener on the dark pieces to make it all nice and blonde. So we're going to go to the close up again one more time, yes. just to see really yes. up close and personal all of the different so let's go on. dimension, but it's just absolutely seamless. So as you can see here, See how this get close to the scalp and really nice blended and melted. Let me show you one thing, guys. I think this is going to be really cool to show. Let me turn around toward the camera. So you're going to see what I did here. I think this is really cool. So this is the lift that I got. There are some pieces that I don't blow dry. So this is the lift that I got. And you see this here is absolutely healthy. And this is something that was previously done. So you can see how I go going close to the scalp. This is all previously darker. This is her previously dark color. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep doing this on her when she have a grow out like this. And this is gonna grow. The more we get the darker natural piece, she's gonna get even more blended and more better looking. But you see even right now, look at how this is blended. Like as a most finest nice baby lights, but the thing with the air touch is that, that you can always redo the same. Same sectioning, you're gonna blow dry the same amount of the hair, you're gonna apply on a grow out, no overlapping, no adding the color, it's always the same. That is another strength of the air touch as a technique. Uh, people are saying this is what dreams are made of and it's so gorgeous, so they're loving it. Thank you, it. <laughs> so the dreams are made of me. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And then, there's another question too. Um, would, you, would you charge the same for air touch as something else or would you? Me, pretty much I don't do the other things in the salon. And no, you shouldn't charge the same thing for the chunky highlights that you need 20 minutes to apply it. Air touch is something that is specialty service as a color correction, so it's gonna take you a little bit more time. So you should charge a little bit more. Of course, you should, what I'm recommending for when you're starting to do air touch, start as a full head of really fine baby lights while you're practicing. The more you're practicing, you're gonna be faster. The more you're faster, and getting the better look and people coming back to ask you exact that look because saw that on social media or in person, you should charge more. Because there is, there is no other way to create this look. If you are doing the air touch, if you're really good at that, I have get myself there to be obsessed and I'm really good at that. I'm charging a lot and that's the service that I'm uh, uh, doing pretty much all the time. But the fact is, this is the live about blonding and creating the air touch. I am using the air touch to create the balayage look. It's a different sectioning, it's a different pattern. Also, I'm doing a balayage without doing a root smudge because it's a placement of the foils. That might be something for our next time that we can show. 
But yes, for me, I have a straight price for my air touch and I'm going from there. If it needs me more time, it's gonna be more, add more hourly. If it's really complicated, if it's gonna take me six, seven hours, cannot be same that is something that I'm gonna do in a four hours, so that is. So we're just gonna ask a couple more questions and then we're gonna conclude for the day. So one of the questions is, can you explain the money piece one more time? Yes, I can. So when you have final two sections on the top, that is a section six and seven, so left and right side, if you wanna get more bold money piece, you don't have to do an air touch, just go around the hairline, do this piece. You see how this piece is blonder? Because I push just a little bit of the hair, the next one, it's also blonder, and then the third one, it's not as blonde. So what I'm doing in here, when she lifts the hair up, she gets really blonde underneath, and if I would do the curls and waves, if I would flip off the face, you see how she get blonde around the hairline? So that's the way how I'm doing a money piece. Money piece is a money piece, it's your creative side. If you wanna keep it all blended, just push the same amount of the hair, whatever you're pushing. If you want a more blonde, if you're gonna, if you wanna get more blonde, you don't go with a thicker section, you go with the same size of the section, just pushing the less dark hair in between. And we just wanted to see, there were some people that are wondering about the board, and if you could talk about your board and yes, show I it can, one more time. Yes. And I love that question. Can I, <laughs> can I promote the board? Okay, so this is a carbon fiber board. This is something that I create during COVID because I was bored and like drunk. So I've, I've received a lot of boards and I love a lot of them. Some of them were like acrylic, I love them. Some of them were wooden, I love them. Some of them were like, kind of like metally. I love them as well, they were different. But what I found that I've traveled in my class in Houston and in my luggage, my board got broken because it was acrylic, so I was struggling. I, didn't, I couldn't do the class with the board because it got broken and a half. And then the wooden one, I like the wooden one, but it's like by the time, by the product, and you couldn't wash because the wood is gonna get peeled. The metal one get bent really easy. And then I was, I was cleaning my car one day and I've seen the material in my sport car, which was carbon fiber, and I was like, wow, this is amazing because it's like tin it's durable and it's super light, but it's also it's super expensive because carbon fiber is material that you're gonna find in a sport cars, in a avio industry, and it's really, really uh, expensive. And I faced that it's not easy to cut it out. So I found the people who's gonna cut for me this and I'm cleaning and shipping everything by myself. But you see how thin it is? And you can't break it. It's impossible. And it's extremely light. So if you need for boards, if you go on my social medias and Instagram and link in my bio, you're gonna find there the classes, but also it's gonna be carbon fiber number six. Click there and you're gonna get all the information about that. And thank you if you decide to get this board, thank you for supporting the small business. Awesome, Danilo. Well, guess what? Oh, you're back. I'm hey. back. <laughs> thank you guys for joining in today. I hope you were inspired. Please make sure to message us on Instagram. We can help answer any questions. We hope we answered all your live questions in the chat. And we were so glad to host this amazing event with such a superstar like Danilo. If you have anything else in the questions, you can uh, DM us at Schwarzkopf Can, or you can go and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. So thanks so much and have a great day, guys. Thank you for joining. Thanks to our beautiful model. And thank you for Schwarzkopf Canada for this amazing event. It was a blast, thank you and see you all soon probably in person love you bye bye